Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my like, videos and stay. I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more current uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip. So if you do consider uh, dropping likes and if you do consider uh, subscribing to the channel um, as always. So going to give you some additional um, information um, about uh, Bruno Fernandes. Also going to give you the latest news um, about arriving Lazonio and uh, lots lots of um, other things uh, to currently um, talk about. So we will start uh, with Bruno Fernandes, give you a bit more of, um, additional um, information um, about him. So reportedly Bruno Fernandes is set to talk to Sporting Lisbon um, about um, a transfer um, away if a team uh, comes up with, with an offer that can uh, not uh, be refused he's also come out saying that you know he had a good time um, in Italy you know he's still watching uh, the Italian uh, championship you know both Inter Milan um, and others and he said he still basically you know, follows them um, all them um, uh, Bruno Fernandes so we do know he's been subjected to a lot of transfer speculation we do know it's looking very very imminent um, he's set to uh, join uh, Manchester United I think Manchester United are set to get uh, Bruno Fernandes in a deal uh, worth around £70 million pounds because Manchester United are willing to pay £70 million pounds, uh, for um, his service and I think initially this is what uh, Sporting Lisbon um, of course um, are uh, demanding um, obviously reports uh, came out uh, yesterday saying that Manchester United are very close to signing Bruno Fernandes and he did initially say that Manchester United and Sporting Lisbon um, have reached um, an agreement but he has been on Manchester United's agenda uh, for quite some time obviously you know, he has been uh, one of our uh, priority um, targets but I think he initially said last week that we had scheduled a meeting uh, with Sporting Lisbon you know, to get uh, a deal uh, currently um, finalised but a lot of reports were coming out from the Portuguese press uh, last week saying that Liverpool um, had entered the race, it also said uh, that Tottenham um, had entered, uh, en uh, currently um, entered uh, the race because obviously you know Tottenham are looking for a replacement for Christian Eriksen because um, he's linked to a move uh, to Real Madrid and um, obviously you know they're seeing Bruno Fernandes as an alternative to Giovanni Lo Celso because Giovanni Lo Celso has been one of uh, Tottenham's uh, priority uh, targets but obviously it reported last month that Tottenham had put a bid in for him of around £53 million pounds, but reportedly you know this had been uh, currently um, turned down but Tottenham have got quite a few midfielders um, on their um, agenda obviously you know Tottenham wants to do transfer activity this summer obviously Mauricio Pochettino wants back him because obviously you know Tottenham haven't done any transfer activity in the last uh, couple of uh, windows obviously Tottenham's last signing was Lucas Moura back in uh, January 2018 and obviously they haven't done any transfer activity uh, since then so they have got quite a few midfielders um, on their um, agenda like I said Liverpool uh, he said last week Liverpool were in for Bruno Fernandes I think he would fit Liverpool's system perfectly you know if he did if he did go there which I don't see happening obviously Liverpool and that uh, could offer him uh, Champions League uh, football but I think it's looking like that Manchester United um, are going to get a deal um, over the line for him but we do know mainly you know, it has been mainly Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that have been battling out uh, for um, his services. Uh, but obviously, you no know, reports uh, came out uh, last week saying that City have withdrawn their interest and they have pulled them um, out of the race now for Bruno Fernandes. But initially said that City were only willing to pay around £47 million pounds for his services. But he did say City were willing to um, offer a couple of their players um, as part of the deal. But now Manchester United, of course, um, are in the ascendancy. So it's looking very likely um, he's going to be um, our second signing uh, this summer. Obviously, we've already got our uh, first signing um, on the board, you know, through Daniel James, which is very, very good. Obviously, our first signing um, under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. but obviously you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to want to build on that and bring another four or five players uh, to Manchester United because you can uh, see uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad but yeah, uh, <coughs> yeah, but yeah uh, with Bruno Fernandes uh, like I said he's a really really good player you know, he can score goals he can provide and he'll dramatically um, improve um, at our midfield because that's one of the pivotal areas of course where Manchester United uh, do need to uh, strengthen up obviously you know, Bruno Fernandes um, is primarily um, an attacking uh, midfielder so if Paul Popper does leave the club um, you could say that Bruno Fernandes um, is the adequate uh, replacement um, of course uh, for him but it came out uh, last week you know, saying that Ed Woodward uh, was hesitant um, over our transfer move uh, for Bruno Fernandes I think potentially you know, Ed Woodward um, has got reservations about you know, Manchester United spending big on players who he doesn't think um, are going to step up to the mark. And let's be honest about Bruno Fernandes. He hasn't really played uh, to the highest level um, as yet. So when he comes to the Premier League, it's going to take his football in the, uh, career uh, to the next uh, level. But he's had a good couple of scenes uh, with Sport in Lisbon. And I do believe he can come to Manchester United um, and replicate this without a shadow of a doubt. I do believe he's got all the attributes to succeed in the Premier League. And I do believe he'll, he'll um, exceed um, expectation levels um, in the Premier League. You know, his initial release causes £86 million pounds in his contract with Sport in Lisbon. Um, he's on the contract with them um, until 2023. Obviously, had a lot of experience um, playing um, in Italy, you know, when he was younger, you know, with the likes of Sampandoria um, and Undonesia um, and all that. So, he spent the majority of his career, you know, in Italy uh, when he was younger, of course, but 24 years of age, still got a hell of a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him, and he will fit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, transfer strategy, you know, perfectly, because obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recommend uh, young players uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer. So, it's looking likely that Bruno Fernandes um, is currently, you know, going to be uh, coming in, which is uh, very, very um, good news. 
And uh, we'll give you the latest news about Horizon uh, Lozonio now um, from uh, PSV. I don't think I've mentioned Horizon Lozonio to you guys um, in quite um, a while. Uh, we do know it's uh, Napoli have been linked to him, you know, for quite um, a while. I think he has been meant to. I think he's meant to have been uh, signing for Napoli, you know, for a long time. Um, Horizon uh, Lozonio, but reportedly now he's moved to Napoli. Um, is currently um, stalled. Um, he's moved to Napoli. You know, you know, does you know can still obviously you know happen. I think his agent Riley Oli you know wants you know the deal uh, to be done. But I think from Horizon uh, Lozonio's uh, perspective, preference, um, he wants to uh, make uh, the move. Uh, to Manchester United so I think Horizon Lozonio is hoping that Manchester United you know, can put make an offer for him uh, right um, at the final hurdle so he's keen on coming out to Manchester United uh, reportedly um, he's only had 23 uh, years um, of age he's been at PSV a couple of seasons um, he was really really good um, in the World Cup uh, last summer uh, with Mexico as well and I do believe there's an el element um, of truth in this you know about you know, you know him wanting to join join Manchester United um, and all that but if, from his uh, agent his uh, current agent uh, Riley Ola from his own preference he wants him to, you know, to make uh, the move uh, to Napoli so he doesn't basically he doesn't believe that Manchester United you know, will make any offer you know, for uh, Horizon uh, Lozano and all that but I do think he's a really really good player you know, he can play as a winner um, he can also uh, play um, as a forward and obviously we do know Manchester United you know, need um, a winner and I do believe that Horizon Lozano, you know, Horizon Lozano you know, would be a much better solution uh, than Gareth Bale because we do know there's been um, a lot of talks about you know, Gareth Bale uh, going on um, he did say Manchester United um, are inquiring about getting uh, Gareth Bale um, on loan um, Potentially, I don't think Manchester United obviously are keen on getting uh, Gareth Bale permanently because we know like he struggled with his, he struggles with his fitness regime. Obviously, he's injury prone um, and all that, and he has been inconsistent um, in the last uh, couple of uh, seasons uh, for Real Madrid. But it has been coming out; he's been circulating around the media in the last uh, couple of uh, days. You know, saying that Manchester United, you know, want to want to secure a loan deal for Gareth Bale. You know, we are willing to uh, pay um, his wages as well. You know, to you know get him um, on loan. I think his wages are around four hundred and eighty thousand pounds a week. So initially, we want to get Gareth Bale on a long season loan deal, but um, I think it's potentially two seasons so these actually you not know, an option uh, to extend uh, by um, a further uh, year of course but as you all know I've got strong reservations about, about, about uh, Gareth Bale um, he's 29 um, he's nearly uh, 30 uh, years um, of age now so he's aging up um, he's Gareth Bale and um, we're not keen on getting him on a permanent deal I think initially it said Real Madrid uh, want around uh, what £75 million for him so basically Real Madrid are looking to recoup the majority of the money that they did pay for him from Tottenham back in 2013 because Real Madrid paid £85 million for him uh, from Tottenham uh, back in uh, 2013 but obviously Manchester United reluctant to pay 75 million and Tottenham of course are reluctant to pay 75 million but it's going to be hard for Real Madrid to get rid of Gareth Bale permanently you know based on his substantial wages and all that and you know Real Madrid would not recoup the initial 85 million pounds anywhere you know maybe they could get 50 or 55 million pounds if they were willing to let him go permanently but it's going to be hard for them you know to recoup the initial 85 million pounds that they did pay for him but to say that Gareth Bale um, is injury prone you know he's you know his ratio is still very very good you know he scored 102 goals in 231 games uh, for Real Madrid and I think he's provided them um, about uh, 64 um, system and all that so let's be honest you know his ratio is uh, still uh, very very um, good but yeah Manchester United have inquired about getting him on a loan obviously you know Manchester United as well um, are willing to uh, pay him um, a loan fee for him but we do know he's been relentless you know linked with a move to Manchester United since like what 2013 and obviously you know the rumours um, have continued uh, to persist there uh, since then but yeah like I said he's been at Real Madrid six years he's won 13 major honours and all that I think including their four uh, Champions Leagues but obviously you know Zinedine Zidane, Zidane um, has confirmed that Gareth Bale um, is no longer a uh, part of his plans at Real Madrid and he's confirmed that Gareth Bale has no future um, at Real Madrid but he has still got three years left um, on his contract uh, with Real Madrid and I think from Gareth Bale's perspective you know he's got no intentions um, of leaving uh, Real Madrid um, and all that he's got no intentions of leaving uh, Real Madrid but yeah definitely Zinedine Zidane and Florentina Perez of course uh, want to uh, get rid of him obviously Real Madrid have confirmed they've got two signings on the board now obviously they've got Eden Hazard from Chelsea and obviously you know they've got um, you know Luka Jovetic uh, from Frankfurt of course and now um, you know possibly you know Pogba could be still part of the deal you know with Gareth Bale um, and all that because it came out the other day in the media saying that Real Madrid you know we're willing to offer Gareth Bale um, in the transfer offer uh, for Paul Pogba and all that because obviously we do know Paul Pogba is one of uh, Real Madrid's uh, priority uh, targets of course Real Madrid are looking to get a deal um, over the line uh, for Paul Pogba um, even though Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is working on trying to uh, keep him um, his imperative uh, players um, at the football club and obviously uh, Paul Pogba is one of um, one of his um, imperative players but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has blatantly made it uh, sorry Paul Pogba has made it blatantly clear that he does uh, want to uh, leave uh, Manchester United I do believe his first choice preference um, is Real Madrid uh, without um, a shadow of a doubt there has been talk saying that Juventus are, re, uh, are interested in re-signing him a lot of reports were emerging out about that uh, last week Juventus have, be, uh, have been in negotiations with his um, agent uh, Riley Ola and obviously it does say Juventus um 
Juventus um, have made um, initial uh, contact uh, with Manchester United, but from fouls I know at the moment, no formal bid um, has been put in um, as yet. And maybe Paul probably you know, would be open to making the return back to Cherwin. You know, don't forget, he did have uh, four good years um, in Cherwin. Uh, you know, uh, did uh, Paul probably, you know, he exceeded um, expectation levels um, and all that and did really, really well. But obviously, he hasn't replicated this form, you know, since he came back to uh, Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, we paid eight to nine million pounds for him. Obviously, um, our most expensive signing. But obviously, we've got a history um, of spending a uh, big um, on players, you know, especially um, in recent years, you know, Pogba, eight to nine. Eight to nine million, you know, Lukaku, seventy five million pounds. And obviously, you know, Paul Pub is linked to a move away from Old Trafford, also Lukaku's linked to a move away from Old Trafford. But these are possibility chance that they could still remain at the football club, you know, based on the huge transfer fees uh, that we have put on them. But he did have four good years there uh, with Juventus, did Paul Pub. Probably more than likely Juventus would have to offload a couple of their essential players um, as part of the deal uh, to fund uh, the move for Paul Pub because I don't think Juventus would be able to afford uh, Paul uh, wouldn't be able to, you know, get Paul Pub in a straight cash payment because obviously, you know, they can't afford uh, Paul Pub uh, my right. Um, it did say one of the players they were willing to offer us uh, was Paulo uh, de Bala, um, and all that but I still believe his first choice uh, preference um, is Real Madrid reports have been coming out saying that Manchester United and you know Real Madrid have been negotiations um, over the sale of Paul Pogba you know reportedly you know we want around £150 million pounds for him but a couple of the main factor reasons why Paul Pogba may want to leave the club because maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players maybe he wants to be win in Champions League football wants to be winning stuff wants to be competing and obviously he's not experiencing this um, at Manchester United so maybe Paul Pogba you know wants to uh, rejuvenate um, his career but he came out a couple of weeks ago saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, was willing to um, offer him uh, the captaincy um, in the bid you know, to convince him uh, to stay um, at the club and all that. You know, Paul Pobber still got two went two years left on his contract with Manchester United plus um, an option um, of a further year but we do know at least in the last month or two that Paul Pobber's agent Marnie Raliola has been in the process um, of finding um, a new club um, of course because he's blatantly made it clear that he wants to uh, leave uh, Manchester United. Um, like I said we saw the glimpse of Paul Pobber's best form mainly in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first three months um, as interim manager and we mainly saw the best of Paul Pobber when Ander Herrera was playing so that just emphasises how much of an impact you know, Ander Herrera made because he freed up Paul Pogba you know Pogba was in scoring goals he was providing he was expressing himself and he was in absolutely scintillating form in that uh, three month uh, period but he hasn't really been the fundamental player at Manchester United as we all thought him mean, currently uh, would have been obviously the going back uh, last year Paul Pogba was heavily linked to a move away from Manchester United you know based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho um, obviously you know Paul Pogba got one of his best wishes when Jose Mourinho of course uh, left uh, the club because he had um, a bad relationship and a couple of main factor reasons why it didn't work out under Jose Mourinho is because um is because um, obviously um, you know he had bad disputes with the board. You know he had uh, bad disputes uh, with the players um, and all that. And this is the two main factors reasons why it didn't work out under Mourinho. Even though he spent, he, he did spend just under four hundred million pounds on eleven players. And obviously you now um, you know one two. Even though he did uh, win uh, two trophies um, in his first season, but I think there were talks in January of him going to Barcelona. I think also Juventus winning for him uh, back in uh, January. So he has been subjected to a hell of a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation. But he reportedly said we want around one hundred fifty million pounds. I think Real Madrid um, are reluctant, you know, to you know, pay this. Obviously. Zinedine Zidane has instructed his Real Madrid board you know, to prioritise um, a transfer uh, for Paul Pogba. But a lot of reports were coming out from Spain uh, the other week, you know, potentially you know, saying that you know, Paul Pogba to Real Madrid is practically done. Obviously, he, has, he had agreed a um, massive pay cut um, and all that. But obviously, you know, they haven't come to an agreement uh, um, on initial fee yet. So, I, I do believe Juventus are still in there for him. But I do believe his first choice preference um, is Real Madrid. I'll have to lead, read a bit more up um, about the, uh, the information um, about uh, Paul Pogba. But he could be still part of the deal with Gareth Bale uh, coming uh, to Manchester United. So, we do want to uh, get uh, Gareth Bale um, on loan uh, Real Madrid I think they probably would go along with this you know because obviously you know, Real Madrid want to get rid of him Real Madrid from their point of view would probably rather get rid of him permanently but they are going to find it hard you know to get rid of uh, Gareth Bale uh, permanently Bale can play on the left he can also uh, play him on the right but like I said Harari and Lozano from PSV would be a much better solution only 23 a lot younger got a hell of a lot of a more uh, development uh, minimum I think he's available for around £40 million pounds, um, he's arriving in Lozano um, if I'm currently uh, right uh, but like I said he's, be, he's, he's meant to have been signing for Napoli, you know, for you know, for quite um, a long time now, but reportedly he's moved to Napoli is stalled because he reportedly what he's hoping Manchester United. This is from Arrival Zonio's perspective. He's hoping Manchester United can come in right the final hurdle um, and make an offer because reportedly he wants to uh, join Manchester United. His agent Raliola wants him to make uh, the move to Napoli, so he wants her uh, the deal uh, to be done and all that. But um, yeah, so potentially he wants her uh, to make the move to Manchester United. Uh, you know, does uh, Arrival in Lozano, and I think he'd be a great addition to our squad. Um, obviously he's the obvious candidate, you know, of that right wing as well, and that's one of you know that's one of the areas where Manchester United. Uh, do need to work currently uh, strengthen up and all that so yeah there has been a lot of talk I think it came out yesterday about this um, about arriving the Zonia but I think there's an element of truth in it if I'm going to be quite honest with you um 
But yeah, it's coming from the Sun, and I think um, it's coming here from the Metro. Um, I want to give you some additional um, information about Anwan Pasaka uh, from Crystal Palace, um, as I've been updating you um, on a regular basis. Uh, reports uh, were merging out yesterday, saying that Manchester United um, are reportedly, you know, um, you know, willing to we're willing to um, offer um, uh, uh, up our bid for him. Um, reportedly now we're preparing to offer around fifty million pounds. Whether this is going to be enough to convince Chris, convince Crystal Palace to sell him or not, um, I do not know. I think Crystal Palace um, are demanding that they want around at least sixty million pounds uh, for um, his services. But maybe fifty million pound could be just enough, you know, to get a deal um, over the line uh, for Anne Wan Bissaka. So recently we've had um, a forty million pound bid uh, turned down for him. I think it came out the other week saying that we had, we had submitted a bid of around twenty five uh, million pounds for his services. But obviously, you know, this figure is going to be nowhere near enough, you know, to convince uh, Crystal Palace uh, to sell him. I think Anne Wan Bissaka, you know, came out a while back saying that you know he's committed to Crystal Palace. He's intending on spending at least um, another season there uh, with Crystal Palace. But if Manchester United are willing to pay around sixty or seventy million pounds, then I think we can lure him away uh, from Crystal Palace. And I do. Really Really, really like him um, indeed he's been subjected to a lot of uh, transfer speculation he's one of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's prime targets obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit British uh, talents uh, this summer so there's a lot of British players um, on his agenda obviously you know Anwan Pasaka of course um, he's British and he's only uh, 21 uh, years um, of age he's proven in the Premier League um, he only made his senior debut um, in, fe in February um, in February um, of last year for um, Crystal Palace he's been their senior squad about what 15-16 months but last season became a first team uh, you know regular he established himself um, as a first team regular last season uh, for Crystal Palace and he has become an integral part of their team. Um, initially, so far, he has spent the entirety of his career uh, with Crystal Palace. I think he's been, I think he graduated from their youth system and you know, all that. And I think he's been um, uh, Crystal Palace, you know, since like what, uh, the age of 11 um, and all that. But progressing up the ranks, initially was um, an out and out winning, you know, when he was uh, younger. But then as he, as he was developing, as, as he was uh, developing, um, he got rotated um, as a right back, of course. He has got three years left um, on his contract with Crystal Palace. Um, I think he's made about uh, 42 uh, senior um, appearances for them. So I think he's regarded them um, as one of the best uh, right backs in the Premier League now and obviously you know we need um, a right back because we need a replacement for Antonio Valencia obviously we do know that Antonio Valencia is leaving the club he's been a long servant here you know he's been Manchester United uh, 10 years um, I think it remains uncertain where his next destination is going to be I think it, actually you know there's been talks about him going to the MLS you know we need an upgrade uh, to Ash Young um, like I said Ash Young's too inconsistent now he's one of the problematic uh, players at Manchester United obviously you know Ash Young's uh, been here uh, eight years so he's been a another long serving player here don't get me wrong I've admired his career at Manchester United you know when he was younger he was a really really good winner uh, was Ash Young, but now he's past his sell by date. You know, he's 33, he's 34 um, years um, of age. I think he's going to be given the captaincy uh, for next season. Um, obviously, you not know, Ash Young uh, was our first choice uh, right back uh, last season, but like I said, he's no longer got the abilities, you know, to fulfill that right back position. So we need an upgrade to win. Uh, and obviously, you know, we need um, a cover up uh, for Diego Dallot. Obviously, you know, we only got Diego Dallot last summer uh, from Porto. Obviously, you know, we got him for around uh, 19 or was it 20 million pounds, but he's only 20 years of age, so he is uh, the upcoming future, um, is Diego Dallot. But like I said, I think Al Wambasaki, you know, would be uh, the right. Uh, solution for Manchester United only 21 years of age and I think he's got the ability to elevate Manchester United um, at least um, in the next uh, two to three years of course so yeah he's uh, one of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, prime tax but reportedly now we are willing to offer around uh, 50 million pounds uh, for um, his services but yeah, there's been quite a few right backs um, on our um, agenda. Obviously, you know, there's been a lot of talks about Thomas Mounier uh, from PSG, you know, going on, of course. And looking at it from a financial point of view, you know, Thomas Mounier is a much cheaper um, alternative, you know, than, uh, you know, Anwan Bissaka. So basically, Thomas Mounier is going to substantially cost us a lot less uh, than Anwan Bissaka. Plus, obviously, Thomas Mounier is a lot more experienced uh, than Anwan Bissaka. And um, obviously, you know, Thomas Mounier is 27, you know, Anwan Bissaka, of course, um, is 21. But it's looking very imminent that Thomas Mounier is going to be leaving PSG. But a lot of reports came out uh, the other week uh, saying that, you know, Manchester United and Arsenal had made initial contact and that with PSG over the potential move for him. I think from his own preference, um, he wants to uh, make uh, the move uh, to Manchester United, uh, the Thomas Munier, because it did get revealed he has been a Manchester United fan uh, reportedly, you know, since um, he was a child um, and all that. So reportedly he wants to uh, make uh, the move uh, to Manchester United. Obviously he hasn't played in the Premier League um, as yet. Obviously, you know, Munier has been at PSG um, about uh, three years. I think he's made about 101 appearances. Um, yeah, and he's done, I think he's done quite well, to be quite honest. I think he's now surplused to requirements and this is the main factor reason why he's set to uh, leave uh, PSG. But Maybe Umran May, you know, he's obviously at Arsenal. He's maybe keen on reuniting with Thomas Munier because obviously Thomas Munier, you know, found himself more of a first team start with PSG when Umran May was there and he flourished under Umran May's guidance. But since Umran May left, Thomas Munier um, has found himself a surplus two requirements. I think he's recently uh, been um, injured um, as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, highly experienced fullback, you know, 27 uh, years um, of age. I do believe he'd, uh, he's got all the attributes to come and uh, succeed um, in the Premier League. He's only got um, a year uh, left um, on his deal uh, with PSG. He is predominantly right back also. 
also can play in other positions as well, so very versatile, can score goals, can provide, so I do believe he would be uh, the right uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. I think it initially said PSG what, uh, want between from £22 million to £25 million pounds, uh, for him, and that is uh, very, very cheap. I mean, indeed, I've heard quite a few people you know, saying that we should be sensible with our recruitment this summer, because there's quite a few players um, out there uh, for uh, Maurice Bill, uh, figure that's on uh, Manchester United's um, agenda, of course, and um, yeah, so we are getting, a, uh, the spending speed is around, what, £200 million, pounds. like I said, that should be enough to get us around four or five players on the board, like I said, depending on how we are with our uh, recruitment. Um but like I said, analysing our recruitment policy is very, very poor because obviously, you know, we didn't get anyone in January. Obviously, you know, we didn't get as number one uh, targets there uh, last summer because obviously reflecting back last summer under Mourinho, the board weren't backing, you know, the signs that Jose Mourinho wanted to rec recommend uh, to come in. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still believes we can attract players to the highest level, you know, even though we're not in a Champions League uh, football uh, for next season. So this is what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, believes. Um, obviously, I do believe in the next couple of seasons, our aspirations um, is going to be uh, that top four, like I said. Um, I, I think we're a number of years off for mounting um, any kind of title challenger. And at the moment, City strides ahead of us, you know, Liverpool um, strides um, ahead of us, so it's very imperative, you know, that we catch up with the likes of Manchester City um, and Liverpool, but we have been playing catch up for the last five or um, six years, because let's be honest, we have been mismanaged in the last uh, five or um, six years, you know, since um, Alex Ferguson uh, retired, you know, we've had different managers with different philosophies, you know, a hell of a lot of money um, has been invested um, into the club, you know, we've seen players come in, of course, uh, we've seen players go, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this summer is in the process of rebuilding and he's obviously, you know, working on bringing players who he thinks are going to fit the culture of the club, who he thinks um, are going to fit uh, the history um, of the club um, and all that. And this is what, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is currently, you know, working on uh, doing. So, like I said, £200 million should be enough, to, you know, to get us around five players in. Obviously, it's going to mount up to a lot more than £200 million, pounds, you know, if we sell Pogba, if we sell Lukaku, you know, if we sell De Gea and all that. I think another problem with Manchester United um, as well, you know, we have, like, far too many uh, players, their uh, contracts are run down. Obviously, you know, that's uh, been um, another issue. Um, but, yeah, probably three or four players, uh, you know, are expected to leave Manchester United this summer. Maybe five players, you know, may leave Manchester United this summer. And, like I said, we have, we've got a release list of around uh, 14 uh, players. Obviously, that's including Antonio. Of Valencia, also it's including um, under um, Herrera um, as well. But as I was saying, it's pivotal that we do uh, get um, a right back in. So who's it going to be? Is it going to be Munier or is it going to be you know Bissaka? Obviously Munier is going to substantially cost us a lot less than Anwan Bissaka, but I still believe that Anwan Bissaka you know, should be um, our top priority. Now I'm going to give you some additional um, information about Harry Maguire uh, from Leicester. Now I think I've been updating you about him um, on a regular basis. So potentially it does say Manchester United are still in for him. Um, obviously um, he's um, a central defender, so I think Manchester United and Manchester City are set to compete for the signing of Harry Maguire. I think Leicester know how much of the central player is and I don't think Leicester, you know, want to sell him. I think Leicester said they're on around 80 or is it £90 million pounds for him and I think Manchester United and Manchester City are reluctant, you know, to pay up to 80 or £90 million pounds for his services even though Manchester United and Manchester City have um, got the financial power, you know, to meet uh, that uh, valuation, of course, but I just don't think he's uh, worth uh, that kind um, of money, um, in my opinion. Obviously, City are seeing Harry Maguire as a replacement for Vincent Company. I think City have identified Harry Maguire as their number one target, you know, to uh, replace uh, Vincent uh, Company, uh, but obviously at some point in Harry Maguire's career he's going to want to take um, his football in her career uh, to the next level but if Manchester United or Manchester City were willing to pay up to 80 or £90 million pounds, uh, for um, his services obviously you know, it would make him the most um, expensive defender um, in world football because obviously the most expensive defender in world football at the moment is Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk who Liverpool of course paid £75 million pounds for and um, and it also make him uh, the most expensive um, English uh, player um, of all time um, ahead of uh, Kyle Walker because I think at this moment in time Kyle Walker is the most expensive um, English player who Manchester City of course uh, paid £50 million pounds for a couple of years ago I think there would also a potential add-ons included in a deal so I think it initially risen it to around £52 or £53 uh, million uh, pounds. but I just can't see Manchester United or Manchester City you know, willing to pay up to £80 or £90 million pounds, uh, for um, his services don't get me wrong I like Harry Maguire a lot I think he's a really good central defender you know, he's well proven um, in the Premier League You know, he has been um, at Leicester um, a couple of seasons I think he has made about 100, 101 um, appearances um, in the Premier League um, initially you know, Leicester got him from, got him from Hull uh, for around uh, £17 uh, million uh, pounds. obviously Harry Maguire initially when he was a lot younger began his uh, career uh, with Sheffield United you know, graduated from their youth system I think he played about 166 uh, professional games uh, for Sheffield uh, United but yeah I think um, you know he's a really really good central defender is Harry Maguire and he would address our defensive deficiencies fantastically well and I do believe he would blend in alongside Victor Lindelof um, in our back line but I just can't see his willing to, you know, to pay up to 80 or 90 million pounds for his services but we do know he's been relentlessly you know, linked to a move away from you know, away from Leicester and he has been relentlessly you know, linked to a move uh, to Manchester United and I think you know the rumours have continued to persist since last summer because obviously as we all do know it was, the process started under Jose Mourinho because obviously you know, Jose Mourinho wanted Harry Maguire um, of course I think last summer Leicester were demanding they wanted around 75 uh, million uh, pounds for him but Manchester United you know, were reluctant uh, to pay that obviously Harry Maguire last summer you know, signed a new long term contract with Leicester so he's under contract with them um, until 2000 
um, and 23. So we are still in there for him and all that. You know, plus um, he's British, like I said, Oligan Solskjaer wants to bring British players in. He's 26, he's in his prime. He has still got a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him. But I just don't think we'd be keen on willing to pay up to 80 or 90 million pounds. I mean, obviously, if, it, if this did if this did happen, it'd make him the most expensive um, English player um, of all time. But I just can't see, you know, willing uh, to pay um, that money for him. I just don't think he's worth that because he's not a Van Dijk from Liverpool. He's not a Colour Bally from Napoli. He's not a Rafael Rano out from Real Madrid. He's Harry Maguire. He's nowhere near in their calibre um, or level. So I just can't see, you know, Manchester United or City, you know, willing to uh, pay uh, that kind of money. Maybe if Leicester are willing to lower lower the price tag down, maybe then we may inquire about uh, getting him um, on the board, um, of course. But basically, Leicester have priced him out of the transfer market. Like I said, you know, Leicester don't want to sell him. That's why they rate him at around 80 or 90 um, million uh, pounds. Uh, I want to give you some additional um, information um, about uh, Matty uh, Delay uh, from Ajax, um, of course, as you have uh, been um, updating you about him um, on a regular uh, basis. Obviously, it's looking very imminent. Um, he's going to be uh, leaving um, Ajax. Um, obviously, he has been subjected uh, to a lot of uh, transfer speculation um, as uh, Matty uh, Delay. Um, I think it's, it's, it's two likely destinations according to recent reports is probably you know Barcelona and PSG I think now reportedly PSG now you know could be emerged as the favourites you know to get a deal um, over the line for him because reportedly I think PSG are willing to offer better terms than currently what uh, Barcelona currently are willing uh, to offer him I think it did say in the media that Barcelona um, are set to uh, reopen talks with his um, agent uh, Riley Ola uh, sometime uh, this week because you know at least in the last couple of months anyway you know Barcelona have been in the ascendancy of getting a deal over the line for him obviously as you all know Barcelona have already got a deal over the line for his current uh, teammate uh, Frankie de Jong who Barcelona you know paid around uh, £65 million uh, pounds and I think his first choice preference Matty still is put you know I still say it's uh, Barcelona if I'm going to be quite honest with you even though reports came out uh, the other week you know saying that talks had stalled you know between Matty still and Barcelona obviously the main factor reason why the talks um, had stalled because obviously you know they couldn't come to an agreement on the terms Barcelona were not, were not willing to meet what Dilip was demanding and what his um, agent um, of course O'Reilly Ola was demanding so so many teams um, have inquired um, about um, his services you know Barcelona PSG you know Liverpool um, of course and I've I think Matty Stilitz agent Riley Ola, I think from his own preference um, he wants him uh, to join uh, Liverpool because maybe Riley Ola thinks you know you know Liverpool would be the right uh, solution for his uh, current uh, client of course I said that I think the main factor reason why Liverpool um, have expressed uh, their interest because obviously you know they want to partner Matty Stilitz um, alongside uh, Virgil van Dijk um, in their back line because obviously you know Virgil van Dijk and Matty Stilitz you know know each other uh, really really well obviously you know they're both Dutch you know they're both uh, playing uh, the Netherlands uh, national team um, and all that but I don't think I don't see him you know really uh, going out to Liverpool um, if I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you but I don't think Matty Stillett anywhere yet um, has made a decision um, on his uh, current uh, future. I don't know when he's going to make a decision on his future. Is it going to be in the next week um, or two? I do not know. But obviously it came out last week. He, he was set to inform Manchester United um, about a decision um, in the coming uh, about a decision on his future um, in the coming uh, days. Obviously I still believe Manchester United um, are in there for him because obviously he's a priority target for us. But I don't see him uh, coming out to Manchester United. And I think he wants to join a club that have got Champions League football. Obviously you know Manchester United haven't got Champions League uh, football uh, for next season. But I think he also wants to go to a club that can assure him uh, First team uh, football um, as well, and definitely you know Manchester United you know would be able to show Matty uh, the later uh, first team uh, football. I think first team football you know would would be much easier for him at Manchester United than it would be for him um, of course um, at Barcelona and all that. And I do really really like him um, a lot. I think also you know you like I said Juventus have been in there for him previously. Bayern Munich were in for him, but I think now Bayern Munich um, have opted him out of the race. City have been in for him. Obviously, like I said, they're looking for a replacement uh, for Vincent uh, Company, but I don't think Matty you know will go to uh, Manchester City. Um, but in terms of the transfer fees, you know, Matty Stilitz, uh, Matty Stilitz is going to cost you from between 70 to 75 million pounds uh, because that's what um, is initially uh, rated at, um, of course. Um, so far, he has spent the entirety of his career uh, with Ajax. You know, he's been in Ajax played since, what, the age of eight, uh, the age um, of nine um, and all that. And progressing up the ranks, like I said, being their senior squad since the age um, of 17, got named captain um, at the age um, of 18 and enjoyed a very good season last season with Ajax. You know, Ajax last season won the domestic double for the first time in 17 years. Also won the Eredivisie Device title for the, for the first time um, in five years. And of course, uh, progressed uh, to the Champions League uh, semi final. So Matty Stillett, you know, can leave um, Ajax uh, with his head held up high. Only 19 years of age, he's still got, he's still got a hell of a lot of uh, years um, ahead of him. And if he, could, if he leaves Ajax, it's obviously not going to take um, his football in her career uh, to the next uh, level. But yeah, I think it, the two favourable teams is obviously you know Barcelona and PSG um, according to recent reports but PSG of course you know have you know spent big in the last couple of seasons you know Neymar um, and Mbappe of course and I'd look like I said I'd love Matty Stillett um, at Manchester United but I just don't see him uh, coming in if I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you I think he'd f- blend in fantastically well um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line but I just don't know I just don't see it happening even though it came out the other week saying that Manchester United um, had offered him a contract you know worth up to 350 grand a week obviously you know that equates to almost uh, 17 uh, million pounds a year if that was 
obviously process that would make him one of the highest played players at Manchester United and also you know make him uh, the highest paid uh, teenager um, in world football but like I was saying we need two central defenders because I said Smalling's not good enough you know Phil Jones um, is not good enough you know they've been two long serving uh, players um, at the club um, of Chris Smalling um, and Phil Jones you know and it was a bad mistake for Manchester United you know giving them new long term contracts but you know, I comparing Small and Jones, I think Smalling's a much, much better uh, defender there than Phil Jones, but they are too inconsistent now, you know, plus uh, they are um, aging up. And, you know, we haven't had a world-class central defender, you know, since we had the likes of Vidic and since uh, we had uh, the likes um, of Ferdinand. So, yeah, I do believe uh, we need uh, two central defenders because we've got we've got the deficiencies defensively and that just proven that last season, you know, we conceded uh, 54 goals um, in the Premier League. I know we've got Eric Bay, but... Initially, Eric Bay's lost um, his place um, in the team. I know when he's fully fit, you know, he does play well. He holds his line. He's got great potential and all that. But I think his Manchester United career um, has been badly affected, you know, with the injuries um, he has sustained, with the injuries um, he has sustained, uh, plus um, with his fallout um, under managers, of course. And I think Man United would be open to sell him. I don't think we'll sell him this summer, but I think we'd be looking to recoup the initial £30 million pounds that we did pay for him from Villarreal uh, back in uh, 2016. Obviously, you know, we got him under Jose Mino. That was Jose Mino's uh, first uh, coming to uh, sign. He got 11 players in, but obviously, not Eric Bay, yeah, was the first signing, but Eric Bay burst into the scenes very well when he first uh, came um, into the Premier League, didn't he? You know, as you um, all uh, currently um, know. Uh, but I think, you know, like I said, his Manchester United career has been badly affected initially now, doesn't even uh, get in uh, the squad. Um, like I said, with Rojo and Diamond, it's looking very imminent, you know, they're going to be uh, leaving Manchester United because they've enjoyed difficult times. He has said at an estimated guess we can get around 25 or 30 million pounds there for Matty or Diamond um, and Marcus uh, Rojo. Um, so, like I said, probably three or four players um, are expected, you know, to currently um, leave. Um, like I said, uh, as I said earlier on the video, I think another problem, we have let far too many uh, contracts at players, uh, contracts run down. Um, obviously, you know, Rashford's um, in the final year um, of his deal. Um, I don't think Manchester United have orchestrated on selling uh, Marcus Rashford. You know, we have been in talks of getting him um, a new contract. Um, reports uh, came out the other day saying that Barcelona um, are reportedly, you know, interested um, in Marcus Rashford. Um, they're seeing basically Rashford as an alternative, you know, if they can't sign Griezmann or if they can't sign Neymar, they're seeing uh, Marcus Rashford um, as the alternative. But like I said, I don't think Man United intend on selling him. We still believe he's a long-term solution, even though he has been inconsistent um, in the last uh, couple of uh, months. We still believe he's a long-term uh, solution. You know, you can put him out wide, you can play him centrally, but obviously, you no know, Rashford's uh, supposed to be a uh, more um, effective uh, centrally. So hopefully, somewhere online, we can get a deal, uh, a new contract uh, for Rashford. He's only 21 years of age, and obviously, he hasn't graduated to that level yet. And it's going to take him a couple of years, you know, to get him to that level where, of course, where he currently uh, wants to be. Um, like I said about Juan Mata, there has been a change of scenery um, about uh, Juan Mata. I think he's got like under three weeks left um, on his um, existing deal uh, with Manchester United, but um, it looked very imminent he was set to leave, but recent reports have come out saying that Manchester United have offered Juan Mata um, a new contract. It remains uncertain whether Juan Mata is willing to accept this contract um, offer um, or not. Um, like I said, he doesn't initially, initially you know, even get in the squad now, you know, uh, Juan Mata, so basically um, he's um, a squad player. Um, I don't think Manchester United would have offered him a long-term contract, you know, reflecting on his age, because he um, is 31 years of age. Of course, um, he has uh, lost um, that yard them a pace but I'd love one Matt you know to stay at the club at least uh, for another season you know I think he's you know been a very very good servant here I think he's been consistent you know he's been at Manchester United what uh, five years now um, as one Matt you know he has made over 200, uh, 200 odd appearances for us in all competitions you know scored um, about uh, 45 goals so I do really really like uh, one Matt um, a lot um, like I said he's been in the Premier League in total about seven and a half eight years this was including his two and a half three years um, he had uh, with Chelsea you know uh, when he was younger you know reports have come out the, the other week saying that Newcastle would interest in him it also said Barcelona have been in talks of getting him on a free transfer, but maybe from one matter's perspective, you know, he would, you know, maybe, you know, want to make the return back to Spain because he's Spanish himself, he grew up in Spain um, and all that. And obviously, you know, he began his career in Spain, you know, with Real Madrid. Obviously, then when he was young, he had four years there with Valencia um, under Um Rymery, of course. But like I said, he's been a great servant um, in the Premier League um, as one matter. So we have reportedly um, offered him um, a new contract. So he obviously, he's not included in that 14 player uh, release list. Um, like I said, with De Gea, um, it's looking likely, you know, that David De Gea, um, of course, um, he's going to be uh, leaving uh, the club because obviously you know, we failed to agree a new contract uh, for David De Gea. He did reportedly say that he wants around 350 grand a week. Um, obviously, you know, Manchester United um, are not willing to uh, meet um, his wage demands. I think that David De Gea's likely destination um, is PSG because uh, obviously you know, Buffon um, is set to uh, leave uh, Paris Saint Germain. And um, obviously, this means now PSG will step their interest up in him. Uh, reports came out saying that PSG are planning to put a bid in for him of around, what, £60 million. Pounds. Um, obviously, you know, Manchester United would want to cash in over De Gea, De Gea uh, this summer. Uh, 
rather than letting go um, on a free transfer uh, next year. Um, I think at full value, he's worth around £100 million pounds is the hire for the goalkeeper because he's potentially the best goalkeeper um, in the world. But um, like I said, we're not going to get £100 million pounds because obviously he's in uh, the final year um, of his contract uh, with Manchester United. And um, we have been in talks for so long of trying to uh, get David De Gea um, a new contract. But uh, like I said, we're not going to get him um, a new contract, um, I don't think. We're not willing to meet his £350,000 a week uh, wage demands. David De Gea has been a great servant. You know, he's been here, what, seven, eight years now, of course. Being a fantastic servant, hasn't really done much on his eight year period. I know he was making costly errors towards uh, the back end um, of last season, but that was mainly to do uh, with the contractual uh, situation. He's made over 300 appearances in all competitions since he's been here. I think he's kept about 100 Premier League clean sheets. Um, he's also, you know, won everything here domestically. You know, he's won the Cubs Player of the Year four times um, out of last uh, six years um, as the Hayer. And Solskjaer knows um, how imperative he is, and I don't think uh, it's in all Solskjaer's plans to buy a goalkeeper to replace uh, the Hayer. Um, I think, you know, he's willing to promote Sergio Romero um, as our number one goalkeeper, but I have got reservations um, about this because I don't think yet Sergio Romero um, has got, you know, I don't think, you know, he's like reliable enough yet to come our number one goalkeeper. We've got Dean Henderson, but like I said, with Dean Henderson, um, he's too um, inexperienced there um, at the moment. I know he has been um, on loan uh, with Sheffield United. Um... But there has been talks about Jan O'Blanc going on uh, that I have been hearing. I'm gonna need, and I'm going to need to uh, read a bit more up about uh, Jan um, O'Blanc um, and all that. But I think reports came out about about four, um, five, four or five weeks ago saying that Manchester United were willing to you know, trigger his buyout clause. I think his buyout clause is around £100 million in his contract with Atletico Madrid. He recently signed a new deal with Atletico Madrid. I think it was uh, only back in April when he signed uh, this new deal. I think he also got a pay rise um, in his buyout clause. I don't think it was much of a pay rise, but he did get a pay rise. So I think his buyout clause um, is at around um, £120 million. You you know, John O'Blanc is regarded as one of the best keepers um, in the world. He's not in the same calibre or level um, as David De Gea, but still a really, really good goalkeeper. 26 years of age, so he is uh, two years younger than David De Gea. I think it was uh, last season, it was only Liverpool's Allenson that kept as many clean sheets um, as uh, John O'Blanc. So that just emphasises how much of a good, 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 good goalkeeper that John O'Blanc is. Obviously, he hasn't been in the Premier League um, as yet, but he has still got um, a lot of uh, development in him um, as John O'Blanc is. A really good shot stopper, I heard. I think I've got reservations when it comes to him uh, saving her with his feet um, and all that. Uh, but he's on the contract with Atletico Madrid till 2023. I think he's been at Atletico Madrid um, about uh, five years, um, if I'm right. I think Atletico Madrid did get, in a, get him uh, from Benfica. But yeah, his buyout clause um, is around um, £100 million. So I think he probably would be um, a good replacement uh, for David De Gea, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. We do know Jordan Pitford, of course, um, has been uh, mentioned um, in the past. Um, obviously, he was good in the World Cup last summer with England. Um, obviously, uh, he's been at Everton a couple of seasons. Um, obviously, you know, I think he's a good goalkeeper. Everton got him from Sunderland for around, what, 25 or £26 million. Uh, Pounds, so there's been a lot of talks about Jordan Pitford going on. So who could who could, who could replace David Day? Because like I said, it may not be an elegant Solskjaer's plan to buy a goalkeeper to replace him, but I think we need to buy a, goal, a goalkeeper, of course, to replace him. And uh, like I said, as I've been updating you on a regular basis, um, about uh, Nicholas uh, Pepe uh, from Lil, um, I've obviously been giving you an update on a regular basis about him. Like I said, the obvious candidate for the right win uh, for Manchester United without a shadow um, of a doubt. Um, obviously, we do know Nicholas Pepe is going to be uh, leaving uh, Lil. That's obviously you not know, imminent. Obviously, it got confirmed a couple of weeks ago by the little chairman that you know Nicholas Pepe um, is going to be uh, leaving. Like I said again, Nicholas Pepe is primarily a winner. We need a winner in. He's a uh, Definitely a much, much better solution uh, than Gareth Bale. Obviously, a lot younger than Gareth Bale. Just turned their uh, 25 uh, years um, of age as Nicolas uh, Pepe. And he's a really, really um, good player. But quite a few teams um, have been in there for him, as you all know. Reports have been coming out lately. This came from Duncan Castles, you know, saying that Liverpool have been in contact, you know, with uh, Nicolas Pepe. They've also been in contact uh, with Lil, and they've also been in contact with Nicholas Pepe's um, agent um, over getting him um, a deal uh, finalised, um, of course. Um, so Liverpool are in there for him. I think also previously Bayern Munich have been in for him. I think Arsenal have inquired um, about um, his services um, in the last uh, couple of uh, months. I think the quoted fee is around £70 million uh, that Lil do want for him. So I think man, the likes of Man United or Liverpool would have to pay around £70 million uh, for um, his services. But I think if he comes to the Premier League, it's going to be the next step for him, and it's going to take um, his football in her career uh, to the next uh, level. Obviously, Nicholas Pepe spent the entirety of his career in France so far obviously he's been at Lille a couple of seasons but he was the revelation of Lille last season you know scored 22 goals uh, provided them um, 11 um, assists and um, yeah so he's been at Lille a couple of seasons he's under contract with them um, until 2022 so Nicolas Pepe of course um, is going to be uh, currently um, leaving um, obviously Bayern Munich have identified him as, as a target obviously because Bayern Munich are looking for the replacement for Adrian Robin they're also looking for the replacement uh, for uh, Frank uh, Ribery so there has been also a lot of talks um, about uh, Nicolas uh, Pepe you know going on so so many targets it's, um, as you all know, on our uh, current um, agenda. Uh, but like I said, the main part of this video, you know, was to give you the, uh, the latest news um, about Bruno Fernandes. Uh, reportedly, like I said, you know, he's set to... Um
he sets a top spot in Lisbon and about um, a transfer of him where um, obviously he's aware of um, the speculation and all that. You know, he did mention that, you know, he had he, he enjoyed he had a great time um, in Italy um, and all that and he still watches the Italian championship and all that, you know, watches um Inter Milan and others he said and all this and uh, yeah. So I still think Bruno Fernandes um, is gonna be uh, coming out to Manchester United. I wanted to give you the latest news about Harvey Lazonio as well. Uh, we do know he's meant to have been signing for Napoli for a long time, you know, Napoli have been linked to him, you know, uh, for quite um, a while, but now reportedly his supposed move to Napoli um, is currently um, stalled because because reportedly Harvey Lozano from his own perspective is hoping Manchester United can come in at the final hurdle because reportedly he wants to join Manchester United obviously he's moved to Napoli you know that deal can get done and obviously his agent Marley Hall is hoping that uh, that deal uh, can get currently um, done but Harvey Lozano reportedly wants to make uh, the move to Manchester United and like he said uh, reportedly I think he's rated at around uh, £40 uh, million uh, pounds, uh, of course so that is a uh, very very good news but I do believe there's an element of truth in this without a shadow um, of a doubt so um, anyway guys drop your comments slides below on the channel um, if you do consider subscribe um, as always and take care god bless and i'll see you all again very very soon thanks for watching